ورسي 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 in die walvisse stop, alle munner en die wind verwaait. Maar ik mis jou vriend, ons is allemaal alleen, op die groot pad sinds die aarde draai. Adelie Carson, I have to say, I'm, 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 a, I'm a big fan. And let me, let me tell, let me tell you where my earliest memory of you, uh, um, uh, where the earliest memory of you that I have is Springbok Nude Girls, obviously. And um, I don't know if you remember Johan Boeta, uh, Five to Five to. Johan, um, he, yes, yes, Five to Five to. I remember Five to Five yeah. to. So Johan Boeta had a, at every Sunday night at 9 p.m. or 8.30 p.m. He had Tempo, which was like, um, yes, yes. You know what I'm talking about. Now, yeah. at, that, at that time, I was living in, uh, where was I living? Groot Karoe, Preiseburg, Nabe Sutherland. That was like... In the middle of nowhere. Uh, the, the only radio station oh, you get. Nowhere. Yeah. Huh? The, only, the only radio station you get is is Radio Sonagrense, and if the wind blows a certain way, you get a little bit of KFM, right? And then, uh, in some some part of the evening, he would feature one or two of your songs. And um, later on during the years, when you when you started doing your solo solo things. Um, uh, another universe and those those songs uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. are quite popular and the ones that I, I've, I've enjoyed listening to and um I, I've, I've, I think I've missed your Afrikaans work I've, I've missed it because in between and moving and everything I've listened to loads of other music and then suddenly uh, someone sends me the link for for this song oh it's Pierre Pierre van Jevels <laughs> he's oh, right yeah he's, he, he's, he's do you call him Speedo no, I don't know. I don't know him that well. I know him. I know him a little bit because we, I, we, I just, I, I just thought I heard you say uh, speedo. I'm like, ah, no, no, I like speedo. Pierre Greef. Pierre, Pierre Greef. Let's call him speedo. I'll, I'll, I'll tag. I him. think we should call him speedo from now on off. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to see him, and he's, and he's coming to Melbourne, um, or he's coming to Australia. Um, I think they're doing Melbourne uh, in, in the two months or so. I want to, I want to see him do an act <laughs> in a speedo. Why not? Um, exactly, man. And he, he sends me he sends me this song. He's like, Let's, listen to this, listen to this. Put it put it on your worst share community. It's, it's, well, I need to find what exactly he said. It, it, he said something like, it's a great tune. Worsia, worsia. And I was like, yeah, worsia, worsia. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I listened to the song and I was like, wow. Wow. T tell me about it. Where did, where did it come from? Come on. <laughs> so, um, um, in the afloop uh, couple of years, in the last couple of years, I've actually lost quite a couple of friends to uh, leaving for, in fact, so I did my first Afrikaans album with uh, Fred Den Hartog from Jewels Fantastis mm. and um, Dane Taylor. Dane Taylor then left to China and um, so my record company guy, Paul Thackeray, moved to Dubai, now in UK then. So they all just leave. So I've actually got more friends in the, almost now in, in, in London than what I've got in Joburg. You know, all the Joburg guys left. And, um, and every time, when, when, especially when you go to Joburg, you feel, uh, if you don't have your friends there, you feel the emptiness, you know what I mean? And I was talking to Arne Bloomer as well on the phone who lives in the UK from the nude girls, the basis, and um, we're chatting, and as we said goodbye, I said, well, I still greet in Beterskap. And then, um, um, so I thought, wow, that is such a beautiful line, and that's where the song kind of originated from that line. Yeah. Beterskap. Yeah. And it's basically just a letter that you're writing to your buddy overseas. Yeah. Telling, you know, it's it's not a, 
It's, I've been on both sides of the aisle. So, I mean, we moved to the UK for three and a half years. And, um, and when you're overseas, when stuff uh, happens, you've got your buddies there, but you always kind of always phone your buddies to South Africa as well, in a weird way. There's, and uh, I also checked out that song from um, David Kramer that is so beautiful that he wrote for his brother that lives in Toronto. I think it's called The Month Stop or something. Oh, I need you, to only get it on you only get it on YouTube. The words are incredible. It's so beautiful. So, um, I, I uh, you know, this is a phenomenon mm. that's happening all over the world kind of thing in a way. Yeah. But South Africa is, we are, we in certain aspects, we are ahead of the curve, you know, hmm. we, um, Zimbabwe was really at the edge of it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Some stuff can happen here that's sort of going to happen all over the planet kind of things. People oh, yes. are moving around. We are, we are, the it's like the Groot Trek all over again on, on a certain way because the world is changing. It is not, the world is changing. Uh, I mean, you've now, it's, uh, you're going to get places that's going to be pro Bitcoin. Mm. And, you know, uh, there's so many different things happening uh, on different, different levels. We are, you know, we we are living through a very interesting time. I believe it's it's like a renaissance. It's a, it's definitely the end of a time. We're entering the age of the Aquarium, Aquarius. This is it dawning up the age of Aquarius? Yeah, <laughs> which is all about justice and truth, right? Um, and at and as we live now, we have got the answers to all our questions at the tip of our fingers. That's why people are all freaked out about their feelings to mm. the degree where the, the humanity is not actually moving forward, which is a problem. Yeah, yeah I feel like there. Uh, I thought about something similar a day or two ago, and I thought, and, and I asked myself, <clears throat> has humanity reached its plateau? Not peak, but did it? Is it sort of on a on a long straight journey at the moment, and it doesn't? It's not quite going up. It's not quite going down. It's not going left or right. It's just sort of no. You, mean you see what I what I've always felt is whenever I um, visited abroad, when I went to the UK or Europe, and I always get a vibe over there. Things are going forward, it's totally going forward, right? But then when you get to South Africa, they're kind of they're bitching on, on the sides about this and that, and nothing is going anywhere. Yeah. What is that program? It's going nowhere, slowly, slowly. There's a little bit of that <clears throat> because because of because of certain reasons, you know. Lots of, uh, it's, the reason. it's because of lots of things, and and I, yeah, that we're living in an age of uh, kind of emotional accountability. Um, but the fact is, you could talk about bullshit, but. Mm. At the end of the day, you got to feed, feed uh, uh, overpopulation. Yeah. You know, the guys who should be doing the job is, is the guys who studied for it and who does the best in their stuff. You know, there's just, uh, we, the, I feel like sometimes the, our priorities are totally, we've lost our idea of common sense. Hmm. We're missing the plot. Let me tell hmm. you about your song, right? Let me tell you about your song. <laughs> The thing is, yes, I like that. Everyone, everyone wants to write that song. Everyone that left South Africa wants to write that song, whether they know it or not. Yeah, I've got, yeah. I've got my my best friends that that still lives in South Africa. And one thing that that happens, especially if you're out of the country for a decade, is it you sort of talk less and you talk less, and then before you know it, you haven't spoken in six months, you haven't spoken in a year. Sure, you drop a line and you just continue on and carry on as if you've just spoken to them yesterday. So that's our good friend. Yeah. But in my heart, I wanted to write them that song, the one that you're singing. Yeah. It's a beautiful song. And um, um, 
it's funny. I, I play Afrikaans music to my kids. My kids are English, right? And um, yeah, they they understand a little bit of Afrikaans. I've got my son requesting your song while we're driving. He's like, can, can can you play? What what's that guy you're going to interview? That what's his name again? Can can you can I listen to that song? And then he he picks certain words out of it. He starts singing and he starts understanding. And I told yeah, this. To, I told I told this to Pierre. I told this to Francois. I said, this is how my kids will will learn how to speak Afrikaans by listening. Yeah. The Afrikaans music, and um... yeah, man. But you know, I I, I feel that because I uh, there's this one guy I really enjoy, um, uh, Blixa Bagu, who was a an, he's an extortion and noise part was this German industrial band, and uh, he did this album where he does this with Teatro, this guy, and he sings this beautiful uh, Italian and. He sings it slowly because he's he's telling the people that he doesn't know how to speak Italian well, mm. but he's trying to communicate. Yeah. But in the, and and his German accent doing this Italian and doing it so slowly and I love it so much yeah. that in a way I was learning Italian. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's uh, language is is and the way the way you sing it it can be very uh, a beautiful powerful thing. What is that guy, that French singer that we grew up with? Uh, um, <laughs> Charles, Asimov, Charles Asimov or something. He must be the beer of the dance of the food. Uh, you, know, you don't know what he's singing, but it sounds so awesome. So I love yeah, it. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a it couple reminds of, me of it, And it reminds me of Nirvana in the 90s, right? Oh, now you're it talking. Was quite, yeah, I don't know most of the time what he was singing, but it sounded fantastic, you know. That's that's true. Oh, that's oh, takes takes me takes me way back. Now, a lot of those songs they sort of get lost in the years as you move on, and you've got little kids. You need to censor and filter what you exposed them to, and then we were listening oh, yeah. to that when we were 10, 11, 12 years old. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I mean, the other day I I wrote a song. Called Food for the Demon, a uh, Springbok Nootkul song. It was on a really, it was a crap album, kind of a crap song. But um, I was just thinking about it. I don't know if I want to. Will I be worried if my son writes a song, Food for the Demon? Not that I have to be worried because I know it's all almost cosplay, it's all theater, but it is just. Uh, for a moment, as a parent, you know, you know, I've got different thoughts. Like, oh God, what's going on in his head, or something. Yeah, and that's and that's when when you write a song like Uganda, that's I mean, that's 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 for all ages. And um, it so, is. Let me. So it, I I work in a school. So this is not my <laughs> this is not my daytime job. I I need to do other work to actually pay the rent. And I work with a lot of South Africans here in Melbourne, and. When when I had your song on my phone, I would walk from classroom to classroom, and as I got the opportunity, I would say, "Listen to this," and each one of them were breaking down in tears. And oh, it, it 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 happened within the first twenty seconds of the song. Then, uh, but you know what? Yeah, this is amazing. I get song described. The first words, two I get begin sing, to get a knob in my keel. Yes. Um, I don't know, that's something about our extra groot and wetenskap and die noot, die toon en die melodie van het. Um, jy, jy weet, op die einde van die dag, uh, muziek, as jy songs skryf, ek, ek glo nog ons aan dat, ons allemaal het die vinger afdruk en ons allemaal, en hoe meer songs jy skryf, eventually you're gonna get to the good stuff, right? Maar dit is, dit is ook a feeling that you are, jy is soos in Athena, uh, you're in a tena and music just comes through you in a, in a certain way and you are yes my a spiel beeld for what what aangaan rondom jou yes uh, uh, this is not this is not an adver ad ad advertisement for my poetry but it's it's i've been doing it since i was uh, in, in primary school and the when you're at school and you and you, and you write poetry you you write a lot of it it, it's like it just flows out of you and it's and most of it's a bunch of rubbish but one thing that i've realized is the older i get the less you write but what you write 
it's it's really good. Well, so they say. <laughs> so it gives you write stuff. less, or are you saying if you write less, you write better? Well, no, no not talking about you. I'm talking about myself now. So, but what what my point is, what you just described when when those words came to you, that's how I feel when I manage to successfully put my emotion into a verse. Mm. When my when my yeah. dad passed away, my dad passed away in December 2019. I was in Melbourne. I couldn't go for funeral. Nothing. All I had mm. was pen and paper. And and at that moment, I wanted to capture what Ooh, I, was. I know that feeling. So hard. It's a heavy feeling that you just like. And I did it. I did it. So, I didn't have to what comes out is much more heavier. It's yeah. it's amazing. How you can write that. You know sometimes. Um, it's it's just a weird thing. I mean, you can write. I write loads of sad songs, yeah. But the yeah. ones you write where there's real emotion involved, you get it's the same words, but somehow they will carry more weight. Yeah, and and quite it, often those same words, right. like you know, you know, who said this Joe Black. I interviewed Joe Black um, last year in October, and he said he he said that what he writes or sings at times might mean something specific to him. But it will mean something completely different to another person, and and it'll have the same impact on that person's life. Well, you know what? I my favorite song in the world. I I thought long and hard about it, and so, so I I quite I, I like "Hole of the Moon" from Waterboys, <clears throat> and um, for all of my life, I thought he was saying because the way he sings the song is you you saw the whole of the moon. Mm. It's like you you seeing the the you don't see the moon you see the hole of the moon like the the a, the, a, a hole in the moon you know or you see a hole where the moon is supposed to be, and he sings it with this real fuck you attitude and I thought fuck, fantastic, yeah. and then I about two or three years ago I actually realized no I heard that the real meaning of it is you see the hole of the beautiful. Moon, yeah. But still for me, I, I when I hear the song, I hear the way he sings it for me, it says. Yeah. And I, I stick with that one. <laughs> well, you should see me in the shower. I make up my own words for all the great hits. <laughs> yeah, man. They've got all new meanings for me. Now tell the me worst is I can't I can't my son like that uh, um one song from Tears for Fears, you know. Like, Everybody wants to rule the world. And then I try to like, because I try to get him, a, you know, it's not like I want him to be a musician, but I try to get him into it a bit, like try, try to get him into music and stuff just to have for him to have a good taste in music or anything. And we're lying there and I'm trying to sing it with, and the worst is I can't sing these songs because they're too high or something. Or yeah. And then I, that happens a lot. But, you know, you sit with Carl with a girl like Corin Zoe, she can just like, like a year, like sit about. And she will sound like Michael Jackson. I'm like, what? And she goes, I'm, what? I'm, see I'm seeing her tomorrow. I'm, I'm picking her up from the airport. Oh, fantastic. Corin yeah. Zoyd, she's a very clever la lady. I tell you uh, that. I'm, I'm picking, it's her and her son, and I think someone else. And then SA Events um, that, um, is, is taking Nathaniel <laughs> and all his luggage. <laughs> I'll cut that <laughs> to straight straight to the theater, and then I'll, I'll drop well, my Karen at the at the hotel, and then uh, um, yeah, my wife and I will go actually um, watch the show tomorrow night because um, they're playing just down the road from us. Very excited. Where, where, where are they playing? Frankston Frankston Arts 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 Theatre, something like that. Yeah. Is it a nice theatre? It's in Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. So me and Art Matthews and Ross Learmonth are coming to July. 13th, we're playing Shepherd's, Shepherd's Bush Empire in London. And I think Nancy Hillary is busy organizing us two dates in, in Australia. Where? We, I don't know. Huh? Well, it's big. For the, end, for the end of the year. Well, it's close to a, 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 a kangaroo. There's a kangaroo in the vicinity. So, uh, I have no. There's a kangaroo everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can walk down the road and go catch a kangaroo if you want. 
Hey, are you are you connected to the guys who's organizing these gigs and stuff? Are they yeah, friends so, of yours? So, okay, so there you, there you go. You, you gave me the opportunity just to talk about my app for a little bit. So all of the emotions that you were singing about in your song is, is, is something that my wife and I were feeling. Um, and then last year, uh, February, we were standing in the kitchen on a Sunday afternoon just having a chat realizing we're actually a bit lonely overseas it takes it takes time and work to make decent friends when you when you're not from here and um, that's when i got the idea to make a social media app that will allow south africans abroad to connect with each other not just any south african but other people that's got similar interests as yourself long story short it just blew up uh, we, we're j just over four thousand members on the app alone and then um, through our whole social media network, we've got about, I think, if, if I, uh, roughly 500,000 South Africans on all the social media groups. And our main sister group has is 80,000 strong. And SA Events, the, the main mm -hmm. organizer for all of these events uh, that that's running in New Zealand, Australia, L London, um, Canada, Europe, um, we got connected through Joe Black because he was doing a, a gig here in Melbourne. And we, long story short, they acquired 10% of the app. So they they basically own, they, we're in a partnership. They own some of the app. And um, we, we we just gel so perfectly together. So whenever they've got any event um, that they're planning, they will give me, say, for instance, 10 tickets, uh, like pre-release. And I will give it away on the app, which will then um, obviously motivate people to, to come aboard, See what it's about. You. So we're going to do that for the London show and for all the Australian shows that's coming. Absolutely, man. This thing of yours is going to go places where you don't even know yet. It's fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that. that well, thanks. That's that's good advertisement. Next time you're on stage, you do a good shout out, and and um, yeah, I'll incorporate your ten percent. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that. I've got great yeah. ideas for it. Oh no, that no, gets me excited, but. <laughs> Uh, let's let's uh, let's wrap it up. I want to I want to ask you what what next. I always ask the same question. The thing is, you so you yeah, 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 you're yeah. going to London. You're going to London in a month or two, and then maybe two shows in Australia. But where do you see yourself next year? This time, where, what, what are you going to okay, bring? Here's the, the, the upside. You yeah, look so basically with this big movement happening. Um, it means now, last year when I was in UK, I, I realized that I can basically work in the UK now for a month long every year because there's so many South Africans yeah. and actually make some pound and stuff. So I think from in the future, um, I would love it to be a yearly thing like it used to be where we go to Europe and everywhere and do some shows. Um, I've got, a, I've got a, a rock project coming out of the, in, in October um call with Efford Snyman, Arne Carson and Efford Snyman that is gonna that is incredible. I am I'm, a, I'm a, it's fantastic energy. And it's an English project and that's gonna kick butt. In the meantime, I'm busy writing a new uh Springmark Nickel album. We'll probably start doing some demos at the end of the year. Um and now in March, the rest of this Afrikaans EP is coming out with a new single after Ruchanet. Yes. And then um, and then um, also I've got a song coming out with uh, um, with a friend of mine, <clears throat> um, something West, not Kanye West, another West guy. <laughs> anyway, Benice, Benice uh, West. Uh, uh, yeah, East West. I I can't remember, but um, that I've got loads of music coming out, and I've got projects. Um, life seems to get better with age. Yeah. Well, you, you're also quite the artist. I haven't even touched on that topic, but yeah, let's, let's do another video. Oh, look at that. That's incredible. Drop, drop. What's going on there? Is that like oh, wow. Siamese twins? No. Um, yeah, they're kind of a bit, a little bit giggerish. It's amazing. You know? Amazing. But, um, yeah, man, I've got loads of paintings everywhere. And, yeah. and, and you have a few groot galerijen ook uitgestel. 
Uh, so, so I don't do, I, I've only done one exhibition. I, 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 so I, I do NFTs that, that goes to New, New York and um, Hawaii and stuff. Yeah. That's the digital art. Yeah. Um, that's when I take the paintings and I turn them into digital art. But and then um, and I don't really. I just sell on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram. I sell my paintings like that because uh, galleries take forty percent. Forty percent. All right. Wow. That's okay. Yeah. Keep singing. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> But your art's amazing. Uh, um, uh, I can oh, see thanks. you're just an all-over artistic soul. That's yeah, incredible. Um, and then, I keep thank, myself busy. Yeah, keep, keep yourself out of trouble. Yeah. Thank you so much for the chat. It's just, it, was a, it was a great chat. Um, I'm, I'm looking Bye. forward to seeing you overseas. I want to. I want to. Um, I will need a song word. We'll see. 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 We'll Wersie, wersie, wersie. Amal mis iets en amal sal leen op die groot pad na die wind te waai. Ek sien jou morgen, hoor jylle vaar. Is daar geluk al waar jy is? Hier die huis blauw 7 punt ons. Ek bel jy later as die tyd jou pas.